the Chevy Impulsor, one of the finest, longest lasting, most durable tanks in the grimdark today. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we have the new Primaris Impulsor, the new Rhino APC sort of. I don't even know anymore. It's a flying Rhino. Yay! I actually remember one of these like 20 years ago. Well, it didn't look this good. <laughs> I wish I had that abilities back then, but here it is. It's got all sorts of different weapons. I'm going to show you how to magnetize uh, the different weapon options today. I don't know if it's super necessary, but it's still pretty easy to do, believe it or not. And yes, it does have an open top back. It holds uh, six duders. This new kit is $75 US. You can, of course, get yours for less from Miniature Market, Dicehead Games, or scoop one up at your local game store this weekend as well. Here you can see all the different options. Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, or it comes with a Storm Bolter. You got the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber up here, Orbital Comms Array, or it's got the, uh, oh, the Missile Launcher, and then it's got the Force Field thingamabobber i forget exactly what it's called but we're gonna find out here in a second once you crack this bad boy open you're gonna get an instruction sheet and two fantastic sprues right here that i'm probably gonna have to zoom out on on this uh to show you the rest of it and then a what is this 80 mil base and oh, we'll check on that and then the new repulsor little flight stem and some decals and here it is so spoiler alert it's a hundred millimeter base i just had to check on that right there so it's going to be bigger than your dreadnoughts because i think these are yeah these are 80 so that's 100 hey we did stuff so this kit um it looks cool i i got it i gotta admit it's gonna be a little you know complicated because you're gonna have to put all the uh the little anti-grab panels and stuff on here. It's got a really interesting uh, exposed rear cockpit kind of uh, area right here that we showed you earlier. And um, just kind of putting it together left and right halves. It seems pretty straightforward. They're very specific here on these notes about where these little hex pieces are supposed to be and twisted to. to. And then you got your grills, putting in all the anti-grab mounts. And uh, looks like a bunch of different one smaller panel in the front, one smaller panel in the front, uh, some thrusters and things in the back, and that's and then it starts to get complicated right here. So you can switch out your frag storms or your storm bolters. I don't know if that's super a big deal. It looks like it twists in right there. It's got a roll bumper, bumper uh, on the front right there, like a bumper car. Uh, upgrade Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. You can even have the little dude looking out at all the peasants that aren't floating around nimbly bimbly from war zone to war zone uh hatches super easy build right there there's the base with the new little twisty this thing's like a pill body you got to twist it and then it goes up or it goes down it's very weird and then there's this plate here that also uh partially covers over things depending on what you want to put on there and then you've got the upgrades scott talon missile launcher or the shield dome the shield dome that's what it is okay too easy and then there's how all that looks so there definitely has to be a way to magnetize these to switch them all out because it looks like they both use the same bottom piece right there so whichever one you use and then these two kind of if you want the missile launcher or the anti-air gun are going to need to have these plates switch out it looks like this is all one assembly right here and this has a notch on it but this is flat that's really interesting i like that very very cool design and that's it impulsor boom we did it all right let's take a look at the sprue here it is very large vehicle sprue and as imagined wow one side of it is about the size of a rhino okay that's cool cool to see so your mold lines are definitely going to be all on the tops and the bottoms or the longitudinals as we would call it in the biz i suppose uh, control panels are uh, the same or it's got detail on both sides and there's a hatch. It's kind of cool So so far it looks like it has actually more detail than the Rhino um, And then these chair little seat things What is this? So this is all the grab panels. It's like a half a sprue just of grab panels right there That's kind of discouraging to be quite honest uh, because the mold lines are going to be on the sides of those I'm actually I got a preemptively got out my uh, my mr. Hobby G tool here, which is basically not a toothbrush This is a sander and I put the well I have 
the 100 grit sandpaper right here on it. So we're gonna use this to hit all those uh, pesky mold lines that are super obnoxious uh, and see how that works out. Cause this thing ain't bad. It's like 20, 30 bucks, I think, to pick them up. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the comments and description field as well. All the halves to the shield dome, the bumper, and all the pieces for either the missile launcher or the AA gun. So pretty straightforward. Whew. It's a lot of pieces though. So if you do everything right, <laughs> about an hour and a half to two hours later, you will have this beautiful looking anti-grav transport thingy right here with lots of movable parts. So the sides move and these flip out, um, which is really cool to see. So pew, pew, pew. And then you've got, I actually like the iron hail stubber on the, on the little mount right here, because this, uh, you know, it doesn't, it just, you can just flip it up or flip it down, whatever you want to do. It doesn't come with gunner bits. It just comes with uh, dudes kind of hanging out. So it's just going to kind of chill and do its thing. And you'll have to drill out the, the end right there, but no big deal, I suppose. And then in the back here, I took I kept that off so you could um, maybe, you know, paint this up or something like that. So you're probably going to want to keep that off and then glue it down later on. No big deal. But for the most part, everything goes together. It actually went together better than the Space Marine Rhino um, because the Space Marine Rhino has this top piece that never wants to line up quite right. And this is all sectionalized. Like this is one section, this is one section. And then you've got this on here. Um, everything pretty much fits together and like kind of stays without glue. So you can dry fit everything. And it's a very easy kit to assemble to be quite honest. Now I did take the liberty uh, of using the grinder here on a lot of these parts. So you can kind of see where there was a mold line right there. Now that's super, super flush right there and it didn't damage uh, any of the other surface. So you're gonna have this, these weird mold lines over the, the exhaust right here and also down the length of this uh, handle. And you can also see a little bit right there that, uh, that that's there. And it's it's all super flush right here, but it kind of, it might show up in the, uh, it might show up in the video, but it's very easy. You just kind of press down a little bit and with a thousand grit sandpaper, it it does the Lord's work. And on stuff like this and terrain, it's perfect. I don't know if I'd use it on like a whole lot of miniatures, but this uh, this definitely works well. So, and I did it all across the tops of the grab plates right here. You can kind of see that uh, you know we've we've uh, done a lot of work there. It's kind of uh, kind of sanded down quite a lot all across this bumper right here. But let's talk about modularity oh and here's the base too and this if you haven't seen how this works you twist it and then it either goes it dips up see it goes at a slant or you twist it and it goes back down at the at the level it's kind of cool i don't know you'd have to glue it on i'm not exactly like the biggest fan of it so magnet wise it's actually very easy to magnetize this stuff you're just going to need a quarter inch magnet uh some little tin plates so i cut uh, a couple of pieces there and i'll show you that here in a second two more 25, oh, so four quarter inch magnets. That's what we're gonna need right there. And I think that's, yeah, that looks like it on the magnet side of thing. So that was actually pretty simple to be quite honest. Okay, uh, let's zoom in a little bit more and I will show you. Actually, we don't need to zoom in because this is super easy. So all I did was for the missile pod, I just put two magnets in here. So you can actually put the magnets flush with this and it'll still fit onto this right here and there's a spot in this because there's bottom detail you just put your quarter inch magnet right there boom and then you put a two stack right there and a little tin strips on the back of both your plates that are going to go in here and then you've got your missile will stay or if you want to switch it up and have where's my AA guns there's my AA guns will go right there as well and actually it goes like this and there's those um, so if you want to do something even crazier and have like the shield dome, well, that piece goes right here, but it also uses the same mount as the communications array to drop the orbital strike. So I just took a little pieces of tin and I cut out a little piece of tin and glued it to that right at the bottom because there really isn't room for a magnet. Oh, I did put a quarter, a one eighth inch magnet. So four quarter inch magnets, one eighth inch magnet, and you are golden. Um, and then that just slots in there. Just got another little piece of uh, tin right there, cut to order. 
and same right here just to some thin strips of tin right there you will need some shears um, I have a little Fisker ones which are really handy to use to, to snap all that or to clip all that down if you want and last but certainly not least you just attach the antennas right here I didn't magnetize or do anything with these because they actually slot in there pretty good and when you put a little primer over top of this it will lock in uh, and they will be super tight, I'm sure. And I actually didn't glue these down, and neither did I. But now that the little dish can rotate too, which I thought was pretty cool. So size-wise, let's take a look at all of this. So we've got the Impulsor here. Here's a Rhino. Here's how big it is compared to a Rhino. So it is gonna be bigger than a Rhino for sure. And let's take a look at the Repulsor. So it's gonna be shorter, uh, both length and girth, to the impulse, you could actually fit the profile of this inside of uh, the repulsor as well. But um, but yeah, otherwise it's pretty pretty uh, pretty dope. It's just like a miniature version of this right here. So it's a very very cool looking, and uh, I mean it doesn't it doesn't lack any styling or anything thereof. Uh, it's just a miniaturized version that looks uh, looks pretty good. So very very cool stuff. I think the design is very forward thinking and. You know, uh, for the most part, I would expect to see a lot more of these going into uh, the next five to ten years of the game. As you know, unfortunately, I imagine the Rhino chassis is going to start to get uh, phased out quite a bit. So that is it for this one. This is all I can do. Uh, scoop up your magnets from MagnetBaron.com. He's got a lot of great little package deals, and uh, of course, uh, we'll tell him about the magnets that come in here, and maybe he'll have a little uh, Impulsor upgrade project kit for you guys out there so who knows uh make sure to pick yours up this weekend 60 dollars us get yours for less from miniature market dice head games and of course your local game store hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos